Let me just take this food to the ducks, get some scurry, and come back. But you can do the intro now. Yeah. Hi guys. I'm just gonna wait here and uh, wait for a few minutes to get a few people to jump on. We, I'm really, really excited today because we have progressed quite a bit with our wicking beds. We have spent quite a few weeks trying to put this, the wicking beds together and it's been quite a tough exercise because it is more complex than we thought. Um, but now that it's um, almost there, um, before there is just one more bed because we've got several beds joined together. There is one more bed we haven't put the dirt in. So before we put the dirt in, I, I thought I'll just jump on and show you what it looks like before the dirt, uh, before it's filled up with dirt. Um, so that's why I'm here. I am gonna stay around and wait for people to to jump on with me. But while I wait for people, because nobody is here with me just yet. I might do a little walk to my front garden and perhaps um, show you my front garden, which is um, my favorite, favorite place um, right now, especially under lockdown. We haven't been going out that much because, yeah, it's not encouraged to go out and I just don't really want to go out. So I spend a lot of time in my garden instead and it's just so... I'm so grateful to have a garden that I feel comfortable in and um, yeah so I'm just gonna turn my camera around just do a very quick quick sorry I saw someone jumping on um, just uh, leave me a comment um, leave me a comment to let me know who you are or say hi or wave at me um, I can't tell who's watching um, yeah I can't tell I wonder if I can see comments can I see comments no okay that's all right yeah so if you can um just jump on yes yeah, so i'm gonna turn my camera around just to show you my garden at the front and then i will walk to the back and show you my wicking beds um in my back garden so this is my front garden and uh, i call it the no dig garden i'm not sure what how much you can see the sun is looking so you can't see very much because of the right yeah so this is my front garden um, as you can see, I've got quite a, a, a bigger front garden than a back garden. My front garden is a lot bigger than my back. And the reason why I call this uh, the no dig garden is because I have not done any digging or soil improving in this area. All I've done since we've moved into this space is to um, cover up our whole um, front garden with uh, wood chips, basically mulch, um, or basically tree tree mulch when I say tree mulch it doesn't just mean tree barks being mulched down it's basically leaves and everything else that's been mulched down and I covered up everything with um, with the mulch and two years on as you can see I um, that's two two years ago I did that and a lot of this mulch has composted down and has made the land um, the soil really really fertile now and anytime we dig into the soil or we just do a little scratch we'll find worms now so but then the way we did the garden here is we, we like I said, we used the uh, no dig garden approach and we call it the back to Eden approach, basically using mulch to build up the soil and to enrich the soil. So this is my front garden and I've just been planting all the edible plants here. Um, and this is my, my duck pond. My duck goes there and have a little swim. This is my little banana tree and I've got some almond trees here. So everything I plant here in my front garden, I try to plant uh, food. So um, something that looks beautiful as well as something that's edible. I did have a few lavenders here because they do attract bees, which is great. Um, yeah, so just a quick one, my front garden. I did, I have a couple of, I have three recycled bathtubs that I use to plant more veggies and stuff. Uh, as I say, this is my duck pond. Um, yeah. And I've got another water garden here. I've got, I planted a lot of food in there. This, a lot of plants in there are actually edible. They haven't got enough sunlight, so they haven't been growing as well as they should. But uh, I think next season I'm gonna move them under, move them to where the, a, a more sunny spot. Yeah, so I'm gonna just, um, I see just, so over here is my other area where I planted all my veggies. And in here is all, um, I have a barrier around it because I've got ducks that um, I the ducks I plant stuff that the ducks don't eat out here 
but veggies some of the veggies that we we'll eat i will plant them in here so they can't get in there um yeah but our our duck uh actually made the trip in there once and it damaged quite a few of my crops but they're kind of recovering right now so this is my winter crop it hasn't growing has grown as much as i wanted them to um because i got they got damaged by the ducks at one point so that's my front garden i'm gonna take you to the back now to show you my wicking bed which is why i'm here in the first place so this part of my side garden it's a bit messy at the moment because we're still cleaning up but um, let me show you my wicking beds now. So when, pe when we talk about wicking beds, let me turn the camera around. So what is a wicking bed? Wicking bed is basically a, um, a raised bed with plastic lining underneath inside the, the raised bed. And the, li the plastic lining is to catch the water so the water doesn't drain off into the ground. And um, the, the idea of that is it will become self-watering. So instead of the water draining into the ground and you have to keep watering it, the water stays on the plastic and the, the, with evaporation and everything and the wicking effect, it will, will self-water the soil that's at the top. And I'll explain to you how, how this is done um, because I've got one more wicking bed. I haven't, been, I haven't filled up with soil so we can demonstrate that to you. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around and... Um, just to very quickly show you, we our wicking bed is not like a traditional wicking bed, which is like a square, a big square. Ours is a really narrow wicking bed because we, the way we build it, we want to design it to match the house because we, yeah, we build it according to the house. We still want an entertaining space, so we just build a wicking bed all across here. And the reason why we have wicking bed here is because, as you can see, we have eaves here and more eaves there. So this part of the house will never catch any rain. So it will be very difficult for us to plant anything there unless we're going to water it all the time, which we don't like to do. We like to be able to plant something and it will be self-watering. That's why we decided to go with the wicking bed idea. So these are all the wicking beds that's been joined together. So, and I will show you the first one because that's the one that hasn't been, um, hasn't been filled up with soil. Um, so basically this is as you can see, there is water in there, and there is scoria. How, how thick is the scoria, Dave? Five to seven millimeters. Five to seven millimeters. So basically, um, what we do is you have this plastic lining, you install the plastic lining in your wicking bed, and this will be, con we will contain the water. And it's very, very important for you to get the right plastic lining. Don't get anything you find from Bunnings or anything, because most plastic will be leaching chemicals into your soil, and it will kind of poison your food. What you want to look for is a high density polyethylene 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 plastic, and that is chem chemically stable under harsh conditions. So even if it's exposed to water, exposed to the sun, it doesn't leach chemical. So that's that. Now, so what we do is you have the plastic lining um, installed around the wicking bed, and then you put scoria down. And the scoria has to be about five to seven mil. You don't want it too big because for the wicking effect, for it to carry water from the bottom up and kind of wick the water all the way up, you need it to be about that size. You have it too big, it won't effectively do the wicking. And, um, and what you do is, yeah, you fill up with scoria for about 15 centimeters. So our wicking, our bed, our retaining wall is about 400 centimeters. No, so 400 millimeters. And the scoria itself is about 15 and the rest what you do is you put a geo geotextile fabric over the um, the scoria and then you fill it up with soil and then you can plant on top of it um, what I want to show you though is the David how do you show the can you show them the the output the outlet so the outlet I can't see the outlet okay yeah Outlet is actually buried. I can't tell who's online. Can I? Oh, actually, sorry, I can see now. Oh, hi, 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 no, sorry, I can just see your guys' uh, comments now. Hi, Holly. Oh, there's a few people here just now, but all gone. <laughs> How hot does your living room get in those huge windows? Um, no, it, it got very toasty in winter, which is beautiful. Let me turn my camera around. Um, is that you still online? I can't tell. Is that you? No? Anyway, 
Um, I just responding to your comments. So it gets very toasty warm in winter. We, we, we don't, it's actually get very nice and toasty in winter. But in summer, um, it does get a little bit warm because some of the sun still comes through. But we've just installed some blinds, uh, an internal blind. Oh, it's you, awesome. So it is you online. So we've just installed some internal blind and uh, that might cut out some of the sunshine. So, but ideally I know we want to have an external blind. We haven't got there yet, we'll get there. Once we get David to dig some holes, <laughs> um, we we'll planted the tree. Once we get David, to, once you know manage to get David to dig some holes, we will put. We a, planted a, the tree. It's we natural. can put a sunshade on. Now, uh, no. By the way, um, yeah, we can put the sunshade on. So why don't you put that sh shade cells? Um, it's because we 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 have we have trees here as well. Um, like we, if we put the shade cells, we're gonna lose a lot of the sun for our some of our trees that we planted around here. Sorry, the, the sunlight is in the way. Ah, see, we planted some maple tree here and stuff all along here. If we put the shade out, we're gonna miss the light, the sun. All right, so I'm gonna show you. I'm the oh, okay. So in there, I can't really see because of the murky water, water. but in there is an outlet. Um, Basically, one of these. Yeah, so you install that five centimeters from the bottom, so water can drain. But in our case, it doesn't drain because you basically join it. We we it doesn't drain yet in this bed because we join it to the next bed. You see, so underneath here, you can see the PVC pipe. It's not a PVC pipe, sorry. That is a high density. Pex pipe. It's called a Peps Pex, Pex pipe. It's a high density polyethylene plastic pipe again this is the pipe that is chemically stable it doesn't leach chemicals into the water therefore it doesn't leach chemical into your food so you can't really see basically it's here that's where the outlet is yeah um so it joins there so do you do you want to show them how you install the rest or put the fabric on so what you do the fabric i don't want to put on yet because i need to actually add some yeah. more pebbles and, in there okay so the other thing interesting about this part is which something that we haven't finished building yet is the reed bed. The reed bed is the um, the filtration bed. So this is the tap connected to our bathtub in the in the house. So uh, because as you know we we don't use any chemicals. We I I barely use any soap these days. Um, in a bathtub, we only ever use Epsom salt or bentonite clay or something that's really safe, actually, or even not only safe, even beneficial for the plants, very full of minerals. So the bathtub water will be drained here and it will go down here and it will fill up this area. I will be filling this area up with, at the bottom with large stones and then I will be sectioning this off into three parts. And the reason why I'm sectioning it off is because I'm forcing the filtration system. So the way we're going to do it is we have large stones at the bottom, smaller pebbles at the top. The water will go down. And because of this barrier I'm going to install, the water is going to be forced and the, the barrier will have some gaps at the bottom. So the water will be forced to go down and up through that gap to the next filtration system and the water will be forced to go up and there is another barrier here where we will be installing a bit lower and the water will go over and as you can see here at the bottom here that is the there is two output here this one is the overflow if we not overflow sorry drainage if we want to drain this place drain this one day we can just um open up this cap <clears throat> and let the water drain out if we want to change the water over but this one it's um it's a bit more elaborate this one is the intake basically I, you, I, you, I can't show you behind the house so this one is connected to a pipe if you can imagine again a, a high density polyethylene pipe behind this wall at an angle going up to behind this so the reason why it's at an angle is because and if you look at the height of this, that's where this bed will only get to this height ever. It will never go higher because anytime it goes higher, it will be overflowing into here. But I can't show you the pipe because it's behind the wall, it's under the house. Um, basically I'm drawing the water from here into the pipe behind the house, going up, coming here. So any water taller than this pipe in this bed will come into here and this will flow through 
to the hole there and it keeps going and going and going. And what Karen didn't actually mention that each one of these beds <laughs> When will you be eating the ducks? <laughs> is interconnected. When they stop laying. If you can figure out which one stops laying, I'll eat it. Yeah. Oh no, if you can kill the ducks for us, we'll eat it. We'll make no, you I'll kill them. No. Alright, do you want to talk about this part, Dave? Well, Karen mentioned it already, I was just going to actually add, because the plastic only comes in certain sizes, what we actually did is we uh, had to put tank valves in between all of these. Like There's like four washers in there, just trying to keep it all tight. And there as well. And the drainage system, which we copied from some other guys. Yeah, this is where it drains. Quite clever. What I'm going to do... You only want it to actually be to the height of the pebbles. You don't want them to actually be soaking the earth at the bottom. So you cut this off at the height you actually want it to actually be, so it drains properly. You know, so basically where the pebble is, is about 15 centimeters from the bottom. 15 is about here. So you want to cut this pipe at that level. So anything extra will be drained. We just yeah. overflow. I'm going to get a little bit fancier and I'm going to put this in the hose bib on this so we can control where the drainage water wants. Yeah. But if you have, this will handle any overflows and it will also... Zachary, out, excuse me. Yeah, so that shows that we've got water in there. Drain the system as can you Can you do it. that again? Sounds expensive. Yes, no, it is more expensive than a, it is. The fittings aren't expensive. These fittings aren't look expensive. How much They're like uh, people are watching. This is lucky to be all, yeah, all in all, watching. all the tank valve fittings, no, they're probably around about fifty bucks. Really, only? Uh, yeah, remember, remember, we got them cheap. No, but the the expensive part of this is the um, is this plastic. Um, actually, it's way too expensive. I have to say, it's one of each bed. It costs about costed us about a hundred dollars. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So it's almost five hundred dollars worth of plastic. It's probably it's possible to do it cheaper, but we couldn't find anywhere short notice. Yeah. Of course, you buy it bulk. It's always actually cheaper as well. Yeah. So, so the idea is to hook this up to a hose. And maybe David might, David might be digging a, a trench along the garden and just feed it into... There's a hose here. We won't be putting it on the ground. And it's very messy right now, our garden, so apology. And we'll be feeding into our avocado trees and we've got some apple trees there and stuff like that. So we might just let it drain out that way. So, yeah, so it's a lot of tidying up to do. Our garden is extremely messy right now. But the, only, the other thing I want to show you also is our courtyard. So this space, I don't know how many of you have seen my back garden before. We used to have all this dirt. We had have, we have this area covered up with mulch before. Yeah, I mean, we've got one other person watching. Yeah, we've got two people watching. That's good enough. Um, we've, yeah, and then we, we, did, we, and we wanted to plant some clovers, which is a type of black grass. You know clover? It's good for the soil. I don't like to plant lawns, but I, plant, I wanted to plant clover lawns. But we decided this is going to be too hard because we've got the eave at the top. We're never going to catch any rain here. So we decided just to pave this up with, um, we're still doing it, with crushed rocks. And the idea about crushed rocks, the reason, and the reason why we put crushed rocks is because it is so much cheaper. It's very, very easy to just put on. You just put two layers on. Um, it took us half a day to put this on and um, it's very easy to maintain and more importantly the crushed rocks Sorry more importantly crushed rocks is permeable So if when it rains as you know, it's so important to keep your soil alive. So it's lots of um, microbes and um, worms and all the good stuff in the soil So we really like to keep the soil alive. So what we've done is to use crushed rocks uh, instead of paving Paving will cost you probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars to pave up this area, but the crushed rocks costed us um, maybe five hundred dollars worth of crushed rocks. Uh, we just lay it down, and the water keeps going down to the soil. The worms and anything underneath the microbes will still uh, will still stay alive because they will still be fed water. And the more important thing also is, if one day we decided to, we don't like this space like this anymore, we want to, you know, we want to plant stuff here or there. Here, just keep... You want to marry David? <laughs> no, he's my, mine, he's mine. Um, if, if you decide, <laughs> if you decide, 
um, you want to change the landscape in the garden, you just move the rocks. So it's so easy. That's why I did the same at the front garden. All our our whole front garden is it's designed in a way that is uh, movable. Everything is not permanent. I didn't like. I don't like to build anything permanent in my in my garden. Like I use loose bricks as garden edging. Um, we use crushed rocks as pavement and walking, walking, you know, paving area or you, for the car, for the driveway, uh, for everything. So we can easily change landscape anytime we want. Very, very easy, very simple, and it's very easy to maintain it as well. And at one point we were thinking about even getting a bus and converting the bus to a motorhome. So if we decide to do that in future, that can be so easy because all we need to do is, okay, let's move some bricks. Let's extend our driveway and make it bigger by putting more crush rocks down and then we can get the bus in. So that's just an example of how important it is, is when you design um, your garden or design your house, make sure you don't make decisions that are going to be permanent because things change all the time. One, why? Yeah, that's, it's a no still watching. Thank you, no, for staying with me. <laughs> yeah. So let me know if you have any questions. We. Our next, the next thing we're going to do is to do the reed bed. The reed bed is where I'm going to plant water gardens in there. Like I say, that is the most exciting part because, yeah, because we're basically recycling the water. This one. So we're basically recycling the water and we filter it and then we can use it for planting. Yeah, that's it. Okay. David, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I think you've done a great job of explaining all of it. Uh, it was a really good idea of Karen's this because this has just been dead space for ages that nothing's ever going to actually grow with and uh, grow in. So this is good. That's, that should be enough now, Zachary. We'll put some water in. Yeah. I know it's going to finish setting the levels here. We ran out of the little store here, so I'm just mixing in some big yeah, stuff. Yeah, the big ones at the bottom, the small one at the top. Yeah, I'm just going to say But this. naturally, the big ones will want to go to the top and the little ones will want to I'm go to the bottom. I'm just turning it over with my hands. It's very exfoliating. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Bye. Um, I don't know who else is online. Uh, is that you, No, and somebody else? Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about Wicking Bed, you want to learn how to do it, you want to know... Or, sorry, if you want to know how to... Um, how to make your own weekend bed i can show you point you to the right direction i can tell you where to buy your parts that is coming the, the the plastic that's chemically stable and where to buy the fittings and um yeah let me know wear gloves wives like soft hands david no ask you to wear gloves because wives like soft hands how many wives do you have he said he has a wives plural wives he likes a man that does things with his hands yeah did you hear that <laughs> all right um <clears throat> okay I, th I think that's it for today if you want to know more let me know give me send me a message and um, we will show you the progress after we started planting and also of course when i build the reed beds when i planted my reed beds uh, i'll do another video because i think that is the most exciting part the reed beds and for those of you who are interested in filtering filtering your gray water this is what you need um, yeah, I can explain more once I installed it. I think it's a bit hard for me to explain, you know, with my hands. So that's it. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for jumping on. Okay, bye.